Welcome to this training on privacy and pandemics on measuring student engagement and performance online. My name is Anisha Reddy, and I'm a policy counsel at the Future of Privacy Forum, where I focus on youth and education privacy. In this training, we will cover how, while remote learning, privacy considerations fit into the measurement of student engagement and performance. We're going to take a moment to zoom out here and consider how, when you're teaching a class in person, what information do you typically use to assess student engagement? So this is when you're teaching in an actual classroom. Do you look at physical cues, in-class productivity, student participation? Is there anything else that you look at to consider a student's engagement during a class? Now, how about when a classroom is entirely online? How do you make these assessments? So instead of physical cues that you looked at in the classroom, do you check out a student's activity while they're using an application? Do you require your students to be on camera throughout the entire lesson? And for in-class productivity, do you look at messages sent through a chat function? Do you look at whether a student seems attentive through video? And when you're administering an exam, do you look at remote proctoring? Additionally, for student participation, do you check to see whether a student is instantaneously responding to you? Keep in mind that the technology you're using may have limitations the accuracy of the information collected may not be as accurate as you think it is. For example, if the application you're using measures how long a student remains on the screen, consider English language learners. They may have to switch between applications to translate what you're saying in class or to translate the text on the screen. The analytics you receive may indicate that they're not paying attention because they're switching between different applications, when in reality, they're only trying to keep up. Additionally, keep student circumstances in mind. Students with limited internet connectivity may have trouble staying connected to a virtual classroom that requires video. Students who share devices with parents or other family members may not be able to attend class at the same time as their peers. Consider these circumstances and the limitations presented by analytics you receive from your apps and try to provide alternative solutions for your students. And you should also keep in mind the larger context of the data you're considering. Don't forget, these are emergency circumstances. Not only are you new to this teaching environment, your students are new to this environment. Patience and empathy is essential on both ends. As general best practices, you should understand what data the technology you're using collects about students. It's key to know what information is collected while students engage with your online classroom so you can understand how to fairly assess their participation. Additionally, by knowing what can be collected, you can make sure that only the necessary information is collected and minimize how much student data is amassed. This will help you create a game plan for assessing your students based on the available information and also help you communicate that game plan to your students and their parents, which will help set expectations and build trust. Additionally, to understand what data in collect, is collected and retained and how to minimize that, talk to your IT folks. This way you can ensure that the data collected by technology used to measure student engagement isn't invasive or violates your district's privacy policies. Consider having a discussion about what monitoring is and isn't too creepy with your students and their parents. Transparent communication with students and parents about the data that will be collected and how it will be used will be extremely helpful in building trust. Ideally, these communications can take place in a variety of ways. So consider just-in-time notifications, such as little pop-ups that say, remember, we're collecting data on whether you comment and chat during this, in, during this class session, or that this assignment will look at whether you've read the materials in the learning management system, or something like your grade is partially based on participation in this online forum. Additionally, share with students and families how student participation will be tracked and measured. For example, things like attendance, grading, and behavior. Consider how at, and at what point families will be contacted if their child is not participating in online learning activities. Additionally, share what tools will be used that measure student engagement. Avoid using punitive monitoring wherever possible. For example, one educator took away student engagement points when a student had their video off. But with the considerations we mentioned earlier, 
that might not be unfair and might not consider the student's circumstances and things beyond the student's control. Now we're gonna take five minutes and have you participate in an activity. Take a look at the administrative dashboard of your learning management system. Your dashboard may not be called an administrative dashboard. Just basically take a look at the teacher view of your learning management system or another ed tech tool that you rely on where you have a special view into your students' activities. Look around to find out what information is being collected about each of your students. Do you have the option to select what information is and isn't collected? And how obvious is it to your students that this information is collected about them? And when thinking about the categories of information available to you, here are some examples. Does the learning management system tell you the last time a particular student logged in? Does it tell you how long they spent on a homework assignment? And does it proactively suggest that you reach out to a student? Take five minutes here. You can pause the video if you'd like. Now let's take a moment to reflect. What information did you rely on to assess how engaged your students were this spring when you moved to remote learning? And when I say assess, that may include information that factored into a student's grade, but it also includes information that may have informed a decision you made, such as proactively reaching out to a student to check in. Additionally, how did you communicate with your students about classroom expectations? And what about parents? How did you factor in considerations of equity and fairness when you use the information to collect to assess your students? And lastly, how will you answer these questions when school reopens in the fall? This applies even if remote learning doesn't continue, and it applies for your use of technology in the in-person classroom. Assume that administrators will require you to report on student engagement and that grading policies will not be as lenient as they were for many schools in the spring. How does that change your answer? Take five minutes here to reflect. You can pause the video if you'd like. We hope this video was informative. For more, check out studentprivacycompass.org.